Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got this cute little lidded box for you. Hey there, pumpkin. And inside fits perfectly a Hostess pumpkin spice cupcake. So you can find these at your discount stores right now. Very seasonal. I got mine at Meijer. It's a, one of my local grocery stores. And this is the fun little box that we're going to make. Isn't that great? All right, so let's start out by um, looking at, taking a look at our box pieces. The base of our box is Cajun Craze, and it is six and a quarter inch square. The lid of our box is the Plaid Tidings Designer Series Paper. Take a look at both sides of that. I love this plaid tidings designer series paper. This is four and three sixteenths inch square. I always make myself templates when I make boxes. Now I can keep referring back to them and make them again and again with different decorations. So we're going to um, grab our Simply Score tool here. I put pictures of these templates on the project sheets so you'll have them. And it also helps you to know where to cut away when you're trimming away your excess for these box templates. I've got the Cajun Craze in here first, and we're going to start this one and do um, one and a half inches on all four sides. Got a nice little square box. It's an inch and a half tall. And when you score on an inch and a half on all four sides, take the time and just rotate each side then each side of this box is one and a half inches tall even if your paper wasn't exactly six and a quarter when you trimmed it okay so that's the reason for doing that one and a half on all four sides now for our lid we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna score on all four sides so that our lid is three quarters of an inch tall so three quarters, four sides, and there we go. Now for a lidded box, little square lidded box, we're gonna work the score lines and then we're gonna trim the tabs. And you always trim 180 degrees. You trim both opposing sides. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna work my score lines with the bone folder. I like to, when I'm using designer series paper, work the score lines inside out first. So if there's any um, cracking, it'll be inside the box. See, so this pattern has cracked a little bit, but when we go ahead and flip it around and we score the right side of the box, all that stress happened inside and look at how nice and clean our outside fold is. So that's the reason for it. You see me do it a lot and people ask why I score both ways and that's it. I'm going to do that with my Cajun Craze now also. Okay, let's trim the box and the lid. We're going to do the same thing on both of these pieces. We're going to just cut a small dart, removing the score line from the edge of the paper to the intersecting score line. We'll do that 180 degrees on the op on the opposing side also. There's our cardstock. Now the same with our designer series paper, the lid. Okay, there's our base and our lid. And before we assemble our base, we're going to add a little bit of fun detail. I used the... basic pattern decorative masks and sponged this fun kind of filigree design on my box. This time, let's try polka dots. It's from the same designer, uh, for the, from the same big basic patterns decorative masks. Let's um, add a little polka dot texture. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little grid paper here. We're gonna protect our surface and I've got some sticky notes. I'm going to go ahead and protect the bottom of the box. We're just going to shade the sides of the box here. So I'm going to go ahead and mask off the bottom. I'm going to add our little 
polka dots over top. Got a Cajun Craze Stampin' Pad and a piece of sponge. We're going to just pick up the ink on the sponge by dabbing and then we're going to gently circle over the stencil and apply that tone on tone polka dot pattern. So cool. All right, then I'm just going to rotate my little sticky note here. Mask off the bottom of my box again. I'm going to take that same edge of the template that I've been using with the ink, line it up, and repeat. I'll do that until I've got all four sides of my box stenciled. All right, now we have a nice polka dot box. By keeping the same side of the stencil, Cajun Craze, now we can change out our ink and our sponge. We're going to switch and grab a sponge and some Rich Razzleberry ink. And you'll see from the sample here, we've got a heart, and we're going to apply that same kind of ink treatment. So I went ahead and I cut from Rich Razzleberry this stitched heart. I'm going to slide that right underneath the other side of this mask. We cut that heart using the stitched Be Mine dies, and it's this large stitched primitive heart. Not the largest one. The largest one has the little scallop edge, but this large one here without the scallop edge, and that's the stitched Be Mine. Let's go ahead and ink up our sponge with some Rich Razzleberry ink, and we'll apply some polka dots to our little cardstock cutout. I just love the way this adds some cool tone-on-tone -tone texture, a little visual interest. Ready for the big reveal? Ta-da! I love that. Isn't that cool? These decorative masks are so much fun. They just rinse off with water and the ink just rinses right away. Very easy cleanup. Grab some Terran tape and assemble our box. All right, everybody's got their Terran tape on the tabs, and we're going to remove the adhesive liner. All right, all the adhesive liner is removed on both the lid and the base of the box. So let's go ahead and fold up our corners. Both boxes go together the same way. All right, there's our box. And a cute little polka dot box, nice clean bottom. And we can add our little treat inside on the lid. Next, we can adhere the heart die cut. I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue. And remember, we're going off that edge just a little bit on the left and right are on the left and top side. So be careful with your adhesive. Let's pop that right over the corner and burnish it down. Now, got some pieces that were already die cut. Let me just show you those first. We're not gonna die cut every little bit. I've got two very vanilla pieces here. The little tag is cut using the ornate frames it's this long skinny tag from very vanilla our stitched circle is the b size the two and three eighths inch size and then from crumb cake we cut a scallop circle and that one is the two and nine sixteenths inch scallop circle third largest one using the layering circles dies all right we can adhere the vanilla to the crumb cake and we can adhere these two layers to our box. Got some mini Stampin' Dimensionals here. Let's add a few and pop that right on the box. Now we need to do some stamping. So we've got our vanilla tag. 
scrap of old dollop, a scrap of soft suede, and a scrap of Cajun craze. Ink for stamping is soft suede and old olive. We're going to use the adorable Harvest Hello stamp set and we're going to stamp a pumpkin on Cajun Craze. And I've got, hey there, pumpkin. We're going to stamp that one in soft suede on our tag. Make sure your little thread hole is to the left. See how that turned out. Oh, not bad at all. Yay. Got a leaf, pumpkin leaf. We're going to stamp that on Old Olive. And I got the little stem here, and the stem goes best in the punch if you stamp it like an angry eyebrow. See that? It's like an angry eyebrow. Down into the corner. So there's our stem. Let's move the stamp pads out of the way. And we're going to grab our apple, apple builder punch. Let's punch out our pumpkin and then our stem. See what I mean about an angry eyebrow? You just want that narrow end to kind of point down. Helps you get into the punch easier with less waste. And then we have to fussy cut our leaf. There's only an apple leaf on the apple builder punch. So let's just take a quick little, okay, our little leaf needs a dimensional. And we can adhere our pumpkin stem to the pumpkin. Now take a look with the apple builder punch. That's an apple stem. And this way is a pumpkin stem. You see that? So let's go ahead and adhere the base. And slide our box. Let's add the pumpkin to the circle. We want to keep it right inside the stitches. So cute. Let's bring this guy back in. This is pumpkin pie pumpkin. There's our Cajun craze pumpkin. I think I like the Cajun craze better, but Desi likes the pumpkin pie better. So now, hey there, pumpkin. Our little tag needs a Stampin' Dimensional under the little thread hole and a little multi-purpose liquid glue under the words. And we can add that so that it breaches across the heart, which is flat, and the scallop, which is bumped up, see? Last, we're going to take the awesome, ornate garden ribbon combo pack. This one's been around for a little bit because it came out a little bit before the catalog did as like a pre-order. So I think sometimes we forget about those things that have been around for a while. But this combo pack is a wonderful combination of old olive ribbon and Calypso coral ribbon. And it's got a nice sheen to it. Beautiful um, kind of shiny edges, smooth texture, great colors for fall. I wonder if I can get a bow out of this little scrap that just fell out of the bag. Let's see. Ties like a dream and is a great color palette for these autumn projects. I need a little bow. Not too bad. And is a little bit crinkly, but let's see. Too bad at all for using up a scrap. Let's get a mini glue dot and we'll adhere our bow. We're going to hear the bow right over the little thread hole right there. There it is. Hey there, pumpkin. Pumpkin spice cupcake box. If you got any questions about the project, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and a shop stampin' up 24-7. Maybe pick up the harvest hellos. And the Apple Builder Punch, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.